Dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very happy to uh, welcome you in the forthcoming webinar by Dr. Oleg Fagenson, um, which is called Systematic Innovation Using Trees. Um, I'm very happy to present Dr. Oleg, and I'm sure the presentation of him will be quite interesting and exciting for you all. And um, the presentation will last about 40 minutes and 20 minutes will be left for your questions. So thank you very much and not to lose our time. Dr. Oleg, the floor is yours. Please start the webinar. Thank you very much, Valery. Thank you very much, all participants. Greetings from Suwon, South Korea. And let me start with one of my favorite quotations from Albert Einstein, who said, you can't wait for inspiration. You have to go after it with a club. I believe that nowadays we can modify this phrase a little bit. I would say we cannot wait for innovation. We have to go after it with a club. And in my opinion, trees is a club which will allow us to make innovation process systematic and predictable. Let me share my screen and we will go ahead with the presentation. Okay. Uh, you see my screen, right? Yes, please. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, let me say a couple of words about me. Uh, since 2014, I am in South Korea with Samsung Electronics and my full-time job is systematic innovation with trees. That is why I'm here to share with you my experience, my, uh, how to say, my skills of managing innovation with trees. Uh, besides that, uh, since 2022, I am the president of International Trees Official Association, which is Matrice Official. Uh, in order to tune my presentation and make it interesting for everyone, I have a very quick question for all participants. What do you know about trees? So in this uh, list of participants, I see trees masters. I see some newcomers. So please, in the chat room, just indicate one of those four possible answers. What do you know about trees? And then it will help us to, you know, to build up the presentation in a way it should go. Okay. All right. So what I see now, the majority of participants use trees in their projects from time to time. Uh, yeah, some people know the acronym, but they do not know <coughs> what trees is and how to use it. A few people have never heard about trees. All right, great. So thank you very much. I understand how should I manage this presentation. Uh, this is the outline of our webinar. First of all, I would like to show you some examples of products which are made with trees, but not everyone knows about that. Then in order to get you involved, I will uh, give you warm up problem, which we will discuss during this webinar at the end. Then I will share with you my vision, what trees is and how trees works. Of course, they will be an example of a real project and we will wrap up with some conclusions and I'll make sure that we have enough time for a Q&A session. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, any comments, please use the chat room and write your questions and comments. Okay. Uh, I will start with uh, the most recent examples. Uh, nowadays, Hyundai Motors is the company which has internalized trees and dozens of projects are performed every year in Hyundai. 
one of Trees Masters, my good friend, Mr. J. Yong Kim, was awarded a title of Best Inventor of Korea 2022. And in his interview to Korean mass media, he explained that it was Trees, the methodology, which helped him to be the best inventor. And his area of expertise is cooling systems for hybrid vehicles of Hyundai. So this is the product which you know you can see on the roads. Another uh, area where trees was extensively used is wind turbines. Uh, Ten years ago, GE Global Research conducted dozens of projects about wind turbines, about structures of wind blades, etc. So when you see GE wind turbine, most likely some of the parts are made with trees. Uh, some of example of the consumer electronics, like this fitness bracelet, it was the trees startup he'll be. Now they have the third generation of this device. And the main feature of this is the automatic calorie intake measurement. Uh, there are some consumer products such as a banana package, glass bottles, and this is the famous one, whitening strips for teeth, crest white strips. Of course, there are many more products which are made with trees. The reason I am showing this slide is to demonstrate the variety of product from automob automobile to glass bottles to bananas, which has have a part of trees inside. Okay, just a few examples. As I promised, a warm up problem. Those are, who are trees professionals most likely familiar with this problem because it is a classical problem from Genrich Altschuler, the founder of trees. In accordance with the story I heard, this problem was brought to the seminar which Genrich Altschuler conducted long ago in the Soviet Union. And the problem was solved successfully. And since that, it has been used as a case study for training trees courses. All right, the problem is associated with corrosion tests of metal samples. So how it works, they take a metal little cube, one centimeter by one centimeter, they measure its weight, okay? Then they put it into a platinum container filled with an acid. And they keep it inside this container for a certain amount of time at certain temperature. After that, they remove a sample, they wash it, and they measure its weight again. So the difference between the, its weight before and after gives us some estimations about corrosion of this metal. Very simple, very clear. And the problem is, this platinum container is used because platinum is very resistant to acids, okay? But platinum is very expensive. That is why a lab cannot afford more than one container. So if they need to test a number of samples, they have to do that sequentially, one by one. As you can imagine, uh, the testing time is increasing. So the problem is formulated as follows, how to significantly decrease the testing time. So while I will be talking about trees, you might think about that, you may generate your ideas, you may submit your ideas in the chat room, that will be nice, but I will show you how this problem was solved in the past and how trees suggest that we solve this problem. Okay. Uh, what is trees? Uh, if you open Wikipedia, if you open Google and type trees, the first thing you will see there will be this. 
TRIS stands for Theory of Inventive Problem Solving, which is a Russian acronym, Theoria Reshenia Izabritatelskih Zadash. That is why T-R-I-Z. Uh, for those who are not familiar with TRIS, I will explain briefly that TRIS is a scientific discipline which allows us to find solutions for very difficult problems. As any scientific discipline, TRIS is based on statistics. And when Genrich Schuller, this gentleman on the picture, uh, started his development in the middle of last century, the term innovation didn't exist. So the goal of Genrich Schuller was to teach people how to be more creative, how to solve inventive problems. And for inventive problems, we have a good database. We have a patent collection. So Genrich Schuller decided to investigate patents from different fields, from different areas, and find some common principles, some trends that allow people to make this or that invention. Those common patterns that make people creative. So, Genrich Schuller himself and his uh, followers analyzed thousands and thousands of patents, and they found out some common principles, some common trends, which are statistically proven or empirically proven for any area of science and engineering. Then based on these principles, based on these findings, some analytical and problem solving tools were developed. Today, we will discuss some of those tools, but let me make a conclusion that nowadays, TRACE has evolved into a science of systematic innovation. Okay, if I say science of systematic innovation, let us try to define what the systematic innovation is. Okay, I use Google. That was a week ago. I typed exactly what I was looking for, definition of systematic innovation, and I obtained uh, 120 million of links. So uh, for me, that means there is no one single common definition of the systematic innovation. So I looked through a couple of these links. I analyzed my own experience and I understood that when people are talking about systematic innovation, basically they are looking for effective and rapid innovation. That's what they need, effective and rapid. They need them fast and effective. Sounds good. Why can't we do that? Why can't we generate innovative solutions quickly and uh, with high efficiency? If you think about that, if you think about our way of generating idea, it looks like that. So usually we generate number of ideas, thousands of ideas. Then we apply some kind of filters. We select ideas that we will implement. And out of those thousands of ideas, the only one idea is the idea we need. So the value is very low. That would be nice if we have the ideal value. When we generate an idea, and this is their idea, well, of course, this is the ideal case scenario, which we cannot achieve, but with trees, we can increase this value of innovation process significantly. Uh, so my conclusion is very simple. Generating ideas is easy. Everyone loves idea generation process, but finding the best ideas is hard. In order to find the best idea, we need to apply a systematic approach. Let me use this analogy. Let's say I'm here in uh, Suwon City, as I said, and my final destination, destination is Mokpo City. How can I approach this destination? I can try different ways, this way, this way, this way, 
I can make some, you know, movement from left to right. And sometime later, I will be there. I don't know how much time it will take, but finally I will find this final destination. Instead, I can apply GPS navigation, which will give me a road, right? Instruction, how to get to this final destination. Then I can use a tool. If I use a bicycle as a tool, it will take me 25 hours. Okay, but at least it is controllable. It is predictable process. I can use a better tool, which is my car. Then it will take me only four hours, 30 minutes. So with trees, we have exactly the same approach in my opinion. We have the roadmap, which is divided in different stages, problem identification, problem solving, concepts of sub substantiation. And for each stage, we have a set of tools. And we go from one box to another. We apply procedures that are well developed. And finally, we have an innovative solution. Another analogy which I love is this diagram. Well, many of you have seen that, of course, but let me explain how I see that. If we compare trees with other scientific disciplines, let's say mathematics, the most known science, we always work with problems. Uh, okay, I have mentioned mathematics. Let's say I have a problem. I'm sitting in my office and I know that there are some people at the same floor. And my task is to count number of people on the floor. So I can say, excuse me, I need 20 minutes and I will go from one room to another and count people just like this, one, two, three, et cetera. But I can create a model of my problem. I know that there are 10 rooms on the floor. There are 20 people in each room. So 10 rooms, 20 people. Okay, that's the model. Then I use a tool, mathematical tool, multiplication. I know that 10 multiplied by 20 will give me 200. This is the model of my solution. I do not know 200 of what? Apples, dogs, people. And then I interpret it to my specific solution, 200 people. Same way trees works. We create the model of problem, then we apply some tools, we create a model of solution, and then we interpret it into the specific solution. Well, if I am a normal engineer, if I do not know anything about trees, and I have a problem about corrosion tests, most likely I will start my brainstorming right there. I have my specific problem, how to decrease testing time. Okay, my thoughts will be like that. What if I increase the temperature, then I can decrease time. Why should I apply, why should I use platinum, platinum container? Probably it is enough to use stainless steel container with uh, platinum coating, things like that. There will be a lot of ideas. However, as a trace expert, I will follow this way. I will create the model of my problem. I will create the model of solution and then I will jump to a specific solution. Let us do that together. I see there are some comments in chat. Uh, okay, it's not about this problem. Okay. So uh, remember, we have one platinum container, which is very expensive, and we need to use it for testing metal samples for corrosion. Uh, if we are talking about trees, let us formulate the model. Let us formulate the problem. Those who are familiar with trees, they know how we call these conflicts. We call them contradictions. But let me use a simple word conflict. So the conflict may sound like this. If there are many platinum containers, then the testing time of multiple samples will be short. But the equipment 
cost is really high, I would say unaffordable. We cannot have such many containers. Again, uh, here is kind of trade-off situation. We can think about size of the container. We can think about some substitution of platinum. We can think about some less aggressive medium instead of acid. Many, many other ideas. Tree's approach says, let us imagine an ideal container. And according to Tree's recommendations, such an ideal container is the container which does not exist, but its useful functions are performed. What are the useful functions of this container? First of all, it holds acid. All right, it holds acid. And the second function, it holds metal sample. Okay, I do not like this platinum container. It is expensive and it brings all disadvantages to my system. Let us get rid of that. So there is no platinum container, no expensive parts. And we have two components, acid and metal. And there is something which should perform a function of this container. Well, I do not want to bring any extra uh, objects, any extra components to the system. So I have a choice. Either metal sample can hold itself and the acid or acid can hold itself and the metal sample. The first idea which I may generate what if the acid somehow holds a sample? What if I freeze an acid? Then it can hold a metal sample. But I do not believe that this idea is feasible. First of all, at low temperature, the rate of chemical re reactions is very low. So then we need to have a special equipment for freezing, etc. I do not like this. The second option looks like that. What if we take our, uh, our sample, create a cavity inside and put acid there? So the container itself performs a function of, I mean, the sample itself performs a function of the container. And this idea is feasible. That's how it was solved. Okay, just to give you one more example, just to tune you to the right tree thinking way, let me show you one more example. It is also about cost reduction, a very typical uh, type of trees projects. We have a very simple system. We have a rod, we have a nut, and there is a lock washer which keeps nut in place. It doesn't allow nut to be loose. For whatever reason, uh, my boss told me, we do not need this lock washer. It costs some money. We need our system to be really, really cheap. So the problem sounds like that. We should have no additional components on the, a nut and a rope. And this nut should be tight, tightened forever. Let us avoid any brainstorming. Let us follow the tree's way. The tree's way of formulating problem is like this. Additional components should be introduced to the system in order to perform some functions, but those components should not be introduced to the system in order to keep it cheap and simple. Remember, an ideal component is that one which does not exist, but its useful functions are performed. Well, uh, I'll give you the answer. In this specific situation, we use a recommendation from Tree's uh, guide, it says, if you do not have available resources, try to use void. Void is a free and always available resource. And this is the idea. We take a knot, we create this cavity, we use void. Then we put it on the road and then we smash it with the hammer. So we destroy continuity of threads and this knot will sit there forever. I intentionally showed you these two very simple examples, but uh, believe me, when we perform our projects, very often the goals are very ambitious, but finally we are able to 
you know, identify simple, uh, obvious, I mean, not obvious, but simple problems that should be solved in order to address ambitious goals. And very often those problems look like these two I showed you in the previous slides. Now let us talk about big companies, how trees is used in big corporations. This slide contains uh, some logos of the companies that have internalized trees. Of course, there are many more companies, so the slide cannot include everything. Uh, what is interesting nowadays, Chinese companies are aggressively applying trees, they are deploying trees. If you look at this slide, you see uh, logos of Chinese companies. Uh, one quotation from the article, which was published 10 years ago, well, it is the old article, but it is a good one because it is published by Forbes and it gives us some numbers. According to this article, Samsung had early success with trees, saving over 100 million US dollars with the first few projects. Nowadays, I would say the you know that's the kind of similar range, and uh, yeah, trees became the bedrock of innovation in our company. Uh, just to give you an example, only in Samsung Electronics, more than thirty thousand engineers have been trained with trees. Example, uh, as I promised, a real example from the project. The next generation of um, flexible smartphones. We already have foldables, right? We have smartphones with one hinge. There are smartphones from Chinese companies with two hinges. But why don't we have rollable? Why don't we have stretchable phones? And every time when we are talking about next generation, <laughs> it reminds me about another quotation from Henry Ford. Once he said, if I had asked the public what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse, right? Uh, fortunately, in trees, we have two. We have trends of engineering system evolution, and these trends will guide us to the ideas about the next generation of uh, flexible smartphones. This is the hierarchy of trends. Uh, there are 11 trends uh, here. Uh, I will show you very briefly two examples, how we use trend of increasing dynamism and how we use trend of uneven development of system components. So uh, obviously, uh, in accordance with this trend of increasing dynamism, as an engineering system evolves, the system and its component become more dynamic. Dynamic means flexible or adaptive. Uh, the example here is for you know, measurement tool. So first it was a solid ruler, then it was multi-hinge structure, then totally elastic, and then field, laser ruler. All the same is valid for any system. So smartphone is a system, all right. So sooner or later, we should have elastic smartphone, flexible, right? And flexibility, that's kind of different types of flexibility. As I said, it could be rollable, it could be stretchable, it could be bendable, and so on. Finally, we should have a field smartphone. Okay, now, if you think about, uh, current technology level. Samsung has demonstrated the rollable displays long ago. LG produced TV set with rollable display. We have rollable and flexible circuit boards. Why can't we produce a rollable smartphone? Let us look at the trend of uneven development of system components. In accordance with this trend, as an engineering system evolves, all development of its components uh, performing the main function takes a lead. 
while the development of other components are not in the focus of our research of we do not apply any effort so because of that we have conflicts between different system components in and if we resolve these conflicts we can move the system to the next level with this slide uh, let me explain what that means when the first automobiles were built the engine required the most development effort that is the a component which performs the main function, right? So all effort were focused on the engine. Nowadays, if you look at the modern cars, nobody innovates about engines anymore. There are a lot of other things of to innovate about, like you know, navigation system, safety system, uh, fuel system, and many other systems, but not the engine itself. Same is valid for smartphones. A lot of efforts have been done to improve flexibility of display, how to make it foldable, how to make it rollable. A lot of efforts have been made to you know, make foldable uh, circuit boards. What about battery? Do we have flexible batteries? No. That is why that was a project about flexible batteries for mobile device. And micro trend was proposed for that. And the trend looks like that. So we have a thick battery. What if we make it thinner? It will be more flexible. What if we make it corrugated? It will be even more flexible. What if we make battery which consists of different strips? We increase flexibility again, wickers, wires, and finally mesh. Then, if you look into a structure of the smartphone battery, basically it is simple. Two main components, a metal can and plastic wrap. Let us build this matrix. We, dynamite, we, we make plastic flexible and we make metal flexible. And on the intersection, we are looking for possible solutions. Let's say we have metal, which consists of strip structure, and we have thin plastic film, then we can create a flexible battery. What if we have wires uh, of metal and two thin films of plastic? We can create a flexible battery as well. A number of ideas were developed. I will show you just a couple of examples. This battery is so-called segmented battery. So every single piece of this battery is rigid, but the entire structure is flexible. Or another example, so-called snake-shaped battery. Because of the specific shape of this battery, it is 1D flexible. Well, of course, you can bend it, you can you know, uh, stretch this, but at least you can bend it a little bit. As a result of this project, seven patent applications uh, were filed and submitted to the patent office. All right, as I promised, we need to keep time for the Q&A session. Let us move to the main takeaways. Uh, based on my experience, based on what I have shown you with the product examples, with some uh, simple case studies, I believe you trust that TREES enables effective and rapid innovation. And nowadays, many companies have internalized TREES. They use TREES in their innovation practice. Very often people ask me, where can we learn trees? Well, there are a number of courses available and those courses are for corporations and individuals. Matriz Official is your source, your primary source of information on all things trees. And if you need to learn trees, if you would like to know more about trees, you are always welcome to contact us. There is a website and later I will show you 
our contact information. One thing I would like to emphasize that uh, the conference, the International Trees Conference will be held at the end of August, beginning of September this year in the beautiful city of Graz, Austria. You are all welcome to participate. All details can be, can be found on the website as well. Thank you very much for your attention. This is my contact information and this is the email of uh, Matriz official. Anytime, any questions, you are very, very welcome. Thank you for your attention and it's time for your questions and comments. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, we have 100 participants. Unfortunately, this version, not this version, but uh, this Zoom glitch didn't let more participants to join. We had about 300 participants registered, uh, but uh, this uh, video recording of this uh, webinar will be distributed to all registered participants within a few hours. Uh, please um, ask your questions uh, in the chat window. Emilio Sain says, based on your experience, what is the best way to introduce trees in a company? Uh, thank you very much, Emilio. Very good question. Uh, actually, it really depends on the company. I can give you two examples. At Samsung trees, I'm talking about Samsung Electronics, the company which produces the final devices, the devices which we buy in the stores. So trees was first introduced in 2001. And there were trees enthusiasts who invited trees experts from Russia. So trees was growing from the bottom to the top. You know, there were trees engineers who introduced trees to the top leaders. There is another way. Uh, this is the way of GE Global Research when a senior vice president of Global Research Center introduced trees. And because he was a top senior management, Everyone was involved in trees. So it really, really depends on your company, on the hierarchical structure. And also there are different way to introduce trees. You can do training, you can invite trees expert, you can learn trees yourself and be a trees leader in your comp company. So it is not a single answer to this question. We may discuss it further, but uh, yeah, it all depends on the company structure. Uh, thank you very much. Please, more questions. Okay. <laughs> there are no questions. No, probably there are questions. We just wait a bit. Okay. Uh, from PBM. Why is trees not popular as design thinking and other tools available in the market? Uh, thank you, PV Narian. Uh, also, good question. Yeah, we have done this comparison as well. Uh, I'm sharing my personal opinion, okay? It's not the opinion of the entire trees community. So, uh, who promoted design thinking? right, the professors from Stanford University. So the high level uh, in academia, they published main findings of design thinking in uh, very popular journals, magazines. We trees, we do not have this level. Uh, we are trying to reach this, but uh, we are still not at this level. However, I should emphasize the point that we have design thinking team at Samsung. And design thinking is good as a process to, you know, to innovate, to create something. But within the design thinking, there is a step, a certain stage where you should generate ideas. And there is always the question, how to do so? How can we generate ideas? And this is, the place where trees can help. So uh, I believe I answer your question. Okay, uh, yes, next please. question from Mokzai Dakop. What is your biggest challenges 
on applying trees in your company? My personal biggest challenge is, is this, I do not speak Korean. That's my only big challenge. That is why I am not very efficient in team meetings. Uh, other than that, I do not see any challenges. As I said, trees has been uh, spread in Samsung for many years. That is why it is a very natural language for the engineers. When we start a project, everyone understands what the function model is, what the contradiction is, etc. So for the last nine years, I am very happy to be a part of a trace team of Samsung Electronics. Thank you. Next question from Robert Adunka. Uh, what was your best trace success in the last few years? And do you have a trace fuck up story also? <laughs> of course. Uh, my biggest success was in 2014 when I, have, when I just joined Samsung. I was involved in project for semiconductors that was about substitution of helium gas, which is very expensive with nitrogen. There were a number of problems which were solved successfully. And the project was the best project of the year. And, uh, you know, that was, that was amazing. That was great. Thousands, hundreds, thousands of US dollars were saved and the ideas were implemented. I was really proud of the ideas I developed that time with my Korean colleagues. Uh, the bad story. Okay. Uh, sometimes, again, because of, of lack of, uh, you know, Korean language, I do not understand what is really going on in the project. And I propose the idea, which is not relevant. You know, I spent a couple of weeks preparing slides, working hard, reading patents and literature. Then I demonstrated the idea to my team and they said, Oleg, are you crazy? That's not about our project. So uh, it's not often, but sometimes it happens. Okay, next question uh, from uh, Horst Nachler. Maybe a question for Valerie as well. <laughs> Can you say some words about trees being used in a non-technical areas. Definitely that's for you, Valerie. Well, um, I would say is that trees in non-technical areas is drastically growing. And interest last years is amazing. For instance, whole last year, I spent only on uh, business trees problems. I, <laughs> I, I had several uh, technical projects, but they were just a rem remnants of them. Uh, but next month, I will deliver a special webinar, just like Dr. Oleg does today, on uh, application of trees in business areas. Okay. Thank you, Valeria. Yeah, that's, that's the best answer. Yeah. Uh, the next question from Gregor Panitz. Do you think there is an independent trees department needed in a bigger company which delivers a methodology as a service? How it is done at Samsung? Well, uh, yeah, as I said before, it all depends on the company structure. Uh, I know one example in Russia, uh, when in Rusal and N plus, they have an independent trees uh, department, which provides methodology and service for the other, uh, you know, divisions of the company. At Samsung Electronics, it's a little bit different. As I said, I work for Value Innovation Program Center, and our center is the internal structure of Samsung Electronics. Not only trees, but design thinking, agile, and some other tools are inside the center. Again, we are a structure of Samsung Electronics and we provide internal service for the company. So we are a part of the company. We are not independent, I would say. Thank you. Reem H.M. Strux asks, thanks for the presentation. Can trees also be used for non-technological challenges, for example, for organizational problems? Oh. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, Valeria has answered this question already. And I would like to invite everyone, as Valeria reminds us, next month at the beginning of March, that will be a special webinar from Valeria about trees in non-technical systems. 
Uh, well, just one comment, which I would like to ask. Why it is becoming so popular in the business environment? Because engineers need to get budgets for uh, solving problems for trees projects. But business leaders already have these budgets. They don't need to ask anyone. <laughs> That's a little bit trick behind distribution of business trees. Okay, next question. Kirill Domkin. Oleg Gerasimov asks, what a role of algorithm company have played in your career as a trace professional? First of all, my greetings to Oleg Gerasimov. He was one of my first teachers long ago at the end of last century. Then we worked together a lot at algorithm company and definitely algorithm has played a very significant role in my career. I learned trees there. I started there as a researcher, and when I left Algorithm, I was a project leader and department head. So I was growing up in Algorithm, and I always very respectful to the company, to people to whom I work with. Okay, a question from Mort Zaydakop. Is it true that just by using trimming and technical or engineering contradiction could solve a lot of design problems? I think so. Uh, just to prove my thought, there were some of the first slides I have shown the example of cooling systems of hybrid and electric vehicles at Hyundai Motors. And when I talked to this inventor with Mr. Kim, he told me that his favorite tool is trimming. He used the system, he is trying to trim this and that components, and finally he developed something new, something innovative. Engineering contradictions definitely is a good tool to solve design problem. I believe so. Uh, question from Marcin. Today presentation is about technical trees, but what about trees in business? Is there a huge difference between both? Well, oh, okay. probably a question yeah. to me as well. I would say that the difference is on the level of detail, uh, on a high level, on the level of uh, principles, generic principles, trends, uh, evolution of systems, artificial systems, there are almost no difference. But please join my webinar next month. You all will receive messages how to join it. And uh, there will be, I will explain the uh, and give examples of application of business trees. Um, next question from Redeemer Pacheca. Uh, what are the efforts already done by trees to influence com companies and organizations to shift mindset from minimizing errors defects to innovative thinking? Well, uh, I think that happens naturally. As soon as people learn trees, they change the mindset. Even with those simple examples I have shown with platinum container and the bolt and rod, as soon as you understand that you do not need to you know, trade off, you do not need to deal with trade offs. Instead, you should deal with uh, conflict. You should resolve the conflict, not optimize. Then as soon as many people in your company understand that, the, automatically the mindset is changed. A question from Oliver Gant. You can really surprise people in non-technical areas with trees way of thinking. Well, Valerie. <laughs> that's what exactly I've been doing last couple of years, 24-7. And I must say that 24-7 is certainly not enough to respond to the growing interest. <laughs> uh, from Rudy Borker. What is the faster way, fastest way to get started in trees in a self-study? to a level that enables you to show its advantages in practical problem solving in company and convince management to allocate resources, time and money there. Uh, okay, uh, the specific of learning trees is that you need to do something. It's learning by doing. It is not enough to read a book of Henry Schuller or watch some webinars. The best way to learn trees is to practice trees. Therefore, I suggest that you learn trees and then you have a facilitator, you have an advisor who guides you through a couple of projects and then you will be 
you know, you will be able to handle trace projects alone. Uh, that's, in my opinion, the fastest way if you learn something and then you practice it with the supervisor. Question from Horst Nachler. Is there a critical mass of employees that need to be trained for trees to take off in a company? For example, small, medium-sized enterprises. Definitely. Uh, it is not enough when, when there are a couple of people who know trees. Yeah, because imagine you are a trees expert and you join a meeting when no one knows about trees. It will take you a lot of time and effort to explain what you are talking about. What is the function? What is the contradiction, etc. So as soon as you have, uh, let's say, 40, 50 percent of your team trained, if you are talking about small and medium sized enterprise, then trees can be internalized. So uh, to give you numbers, I would say 40, 50 percent of the employees. Um, Andres Meras, thank you for the conference. Please, when and where the video is going to be available? Uh, this video or or a conference in Austria uh, Austria in, I don't know what Mr. Andres Meras means maybe he can explain David this webinar or a conference uh, in Austria in August September what do you mean Andres oh, okay before he answers there was a question from Peter Yanjgi uh, this one this one will be available in a couple of hours. Please check your email and you will have the video of recording. Um, okay. Peter Jansch Gisprach uh, asks, uh, Siegfried, Siegfried Wiebert uh, asks question, uh, book an online course to RB. Uh, I don't know what to RB means. Uh, well, uh, I can guess if you're looking for online course or book, just, you know, contact uh, Matri's official. I provided the email and we'll help you to find the best one. If Robert, you are interested I in ask a question. Sorry for interrupting. Robert yes. asked the question how to get up to speed with trees without uh, going to a training course. And Robert has done a pretty good um, a session of single lessons which can be booked online sorry for interrupting okay oh, okay thank you for your comment great yeah okay a next question um uh from peter Yanjgi. how can ai tools be combined with trees to support the systematic innovation process excellent great question if you look what many trees practitioners are doing now they're playing with ai bots they're trying to teach ai to be creative to formulate contradictions etc so my personal opinion ai ai is a good supporter for trees because we have not only creative part of our projects, we also have some routine. We need to find a lot of information and handle this information in order to generate feasible ideas. So I think a person, a human, can be responsible for a creative part and AI can be responsible for the routine to support the innovation process with some data, for example. A question from Valeria Dubnyuk. Uh, thank you very much for presentation. Question to Valerie and Oleg. In your practice, in your opinion, which age group is better soil for learning trees methods and applying trees in practice? School children, students that are still not professional in their area, already specialists in companies, professionals. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, my opinion is the earlier is the better. Uh, Trees in education is a very popular direction now. In Korea, a number of private schools uh, use trees to teach uh, kids. In um, universities, there are a number of trees courses all around the world, in Russia, in the United States, in China, in Korea. So uh, the simple answer is the younger, the better, but there is always a question how to teach. You cannot teach kids this engineering stuff. 
the course, the three tools should be adapted for the certain ages. That's my opinion. Well, uh, Gary Halchuler, uh, after 30 years, he was creating trees, said that the younger age is the best age because when we grow older, we accumulate a lot of psychological inertia, which is very hard to break out. Okay, any more questions? Uh, Andre Mera, thank you again. Mohta Zakop, thank you very much for the sharing session. Uh, Ming Yunvu, Jinvu, is there any new development recently in trees? There are some. Uh, actually, if you uh, go to the conference, you will see some developments at different level. But every year we have a trees master defense where people present new development in trees. So there are two options. They may present some practical development, some case studies, successful projects, how they applied known trees tools. But also many people present, not many, that's not many people apply for trees masters, but those who apply present new methodological developments. Uh, last year, that was an approach how to build cause and effect chain analysis by uh, Joze Krush from Poland. That was very nice and interesting development. Some time ago, uh, Dr. Meyer, Oliver Meyer, presented uh, an addition trend to trends of engineering system evolution. So, of course, something is going on in this trees science of innovation. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? We have some two minutes left. <laughs> so, the last question, please. Okay. All I see. Right. It. Yes. Perfect in time. Thank you very much to all participants. Thank you for your questions and comments. And I believe this practice of webinars will become a common practice of Matriz Official. We have already advertised the next webinar of Valery Sushkov. Then, in the beginning of April, we will have another one by Victor Fay. And then in May, we are planning another one by Simon Litwin. So uh, please be involved, check our website regularly and looking forward to seeing you soon again. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Dr. Oleg, for an exciting presentation. And uh, thank everyone who joined, who was able to join this uh, webinar and who will watch it as a video recording in a few hours. The video recording will be shared among all the participants. Thank you very much. Good luck and best innovation. Bye-bye.